with the light on for your slides too? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, please join me in welcoming Bayan, who is going to tell you about the Large Hadron Collider. All right, so hello everybody. My name is Bayan Alizadeh, and today I will be talking to you about the Large Hadron Collider. So just a brief overview on the LHC, um, known as the Large Hadron Collider, is that it is a particle accelerator located in the countries of Switzerland and France, and it is uh, arguably considered the most advanced and sophisticated uh, piece of scientific technology in our world uh, as of now. So the Large Hadron Collider is a synchrotron particle accelerator. This means that the circuit which it accelerates the particles around is in a circular manner, and it uses um, a plethora of magnets and electrical fields in order to accelerate these particles around the circuit at incredibly fast speeds. So it uses thousands of magnets, or uh, actually about 2,000 superconducting magnets in the LHC, and these magnets create a huge magnetic field. Um, just a fun fact to show you how big this magnetic field is, it's uh, about 100,000 times that of the Earth's magnetic field. So it's an um, immense magnetic field, and uh, in order for these magnets not to overheat, uh, they must cool these magnets with uh, liquid helium, which is the coldest liquid ele uh, element, and pretty much how they cool it is they have uh, overground refrigerators and they pretty much pump a constant supply of this liquid helium to the magnets um, in order to prevent them from overheating. So as the name um, implies, it is a large hadron collider, so it is responsible for accelerating a specific uh, class of particles known as hadrons, and hadrons are, some hadrons that you might know of are protons and neutrons. Um, among many other particles that make up this class. So the, L the LHC, as I've stated before, is a 27 kilometer um, uh, wide uh, circular track and it is located on the border of the countries of Switzerland and France. And um, they had to build the, the LHC is built 100 meters underground and this even further complicated the already very difficult construction process because they were always pressed for space um, due to the fact that it's built so far underground. And pretty much the reason for them building it underground is to limit cosmic background radiation. And this radiation would um, kind of distract the very sensitive detectors and it uh, wouldn't, it would prevent them from finding these very small subatomic particles that are necessary for the scientists to identify and analyze. So the uh, building of the LHC entailed about uh, 10, 000, over 10,000 scientists um, from many different countries around the world uh, who all played a part in building this um, amazing piece of technology and it also entailed uh, the um, cost of about eight billion dollars so it was uh, quite costly so the in order to build this they had to kind of use a multi-step plan so the first step in this plan was they built this circular uh, 27 kilometer circular circuit and they placed these superconducting magnets in the circuit the next step uh, they had to do was actually building the detectors so these are as of uh, these are amazing pieces of technology and um, therefore cost a lot to build and they were built um, assembled in their own uh, in separate countries and then finally they brought uh, these enormous detectors to the LHC and installed them into their own caverns and uh, they were extremely pressed for space while installing them. So from, the, uh, from isolating the particles to finally detecting the new particles formed in the collision, uh, there are many steps that go um, in the process of how the LHC works. So the first thing scientists must do is they must 
isolate the particles that they want to accelerate. Now, how they do this, for example, um, if we have a hydrogen atom and they want to accelerate the protons of the hydrogen atom, they must first eliminate the electron and the neutrons in this atom. So once they've done that, they begin to accelerate these particles around the circuit through the use of uh, electromagnets. And um, they also, uh, this acceleration requires an amount, amount of energy, uh, actually 10 tera electron volts. And this energy can only be provided for by the LHC. So after about 20 minutes, these particles reach their maximum uh, speed, which is about 99.99% the speed of light. And um, once they reach this speed, they are both, uh, they're released into a chamber where they collide at uh, various collision points. So as I, as I stated in the previous slide, there are various collision points and scientists um, actually place these uh, high-tech detectors at strategically uh, around these uh, collision points so that they can identify the new particles being created through these huge collisions. And, uh, and these detectors are responsible for um, helping scientists identify and uh, analyze the new particles uh, being created in these collisions. So they kind of display them on screens and computers for scientists to uh, see and analyze through the reactions of the particles. All right, so there are four main detectors in the LHC. There is ALICE, ATLAS, the LHCB, and finally CMS. So here's a picture of ALICE, top is ALICE, uh, middle is ATLAS, and finally the bottom is the CMS. So now I'll just go into a little bit of detail about what each of these detectors actually is responsible for. So the ALICE experiment, um, in the ALICE experiment, scientists collide a type of particle known as a lead ion, and through these collisions, they um, hope to closely study a state of matter known as the quark gluon plasma. On the other hand, in the LHCB uh, experiment, scientists closely examine a specific particle known as the beauty quark. Now, through the examination of this particle, scientists will better understand why our universe is dominated by so much matter and so little antimatter. And finally, it, the ATLAS and CMS detectors um, analyze a wide variety of different uh, topics in physics, which um, include the search for extra dimensions, the search for the long sought after Higgs boson, um, the search for particles that can make up dark matter, and uh, also um, the creation of mini black holes that last for nanoseconds. So all in all, detectors play a huge role in the LHC, and um, without these amazing uh, and sophisticated pieces of technology, um, it, the LHC would uh, not be uh, possible. It would pretty much be useless. So already in its short-lived life, the LHC has made um, a large number of discoveries. Um, however, the most important, arguably the most important discovery in the field of physics in the last century was made um, last summer by the LHC, and this is the discovery of the Higgs boson. So the Higgs boson is pretty much a particle that defines the mass of other particles. And um, in physics, there is a theory uh, which most scientists use, and this is called the standard model. And it pretty much describes particles and their interactions with each other. So after the scientists uh, discovered the Higgs boson, this was kind of the last remaining uh, chunk to solidify this standard model of physics. And now since they've found this, uh, the Higgs boson or the God particle, now um, this, uh, the standard model is solidified and accurate. So although the LHC has made um, a large number, as I've stated before, a large number of discoveries, there are still many discoveries to be made in the field of physics. For example, physicists um, app, app right now are looking for a specific uh, type of particles known as supersymmetric particles. These are pretty much the counterparts to the particles that we know right now. And the thing about these supersymmetric particles is that they are much heavier than the particles 
that we know right now and therefore require um, much larger energies to be found and this energy can only be provided for by the LHC. Um, and there are of course a lot of other um, open questions in the field of unanswered questions in the field of physics such as um, why there is such an abundance of matter and so little antimatter. Um, if there are possi uh, possibly other forms of neutrinos, um, what particles make up dark matter if supersymmetric particles do exist? And finally, if there are um, just other particles that might open up new doors of understanding in the field of physics. So hopefully the LHC can um, help discover, help us learn more about our universe and uh, discover more significant uh, things in the future. Uh, thank you for listening, and now I'd like to open it up for questions or comments. project is I kind of made a small replica of the LHC um, and I kind of de depicted the particles being accelerated around the LHC by through the use of um, LED lights as you can see moving around this circuit and as I talked about in my presentation these are the two detectors and uh, these are the two collision points and pretty much where these beams of particles collide is where the detectors um, kind of detect the new particles being formed. So I just thought it would be cool to kind of depict this through the use of something, um, through the use of LEDs and yeah, so thank you. And any questions? Can I ask you, actually I have two um, before we go on to the others, because this is every day we have the benefit of having an expert in the room. Um, for somebody who had never heard of antimatter before, can you tell the seventh and eighth graders a little bit, like how would you define antimatter? So matter is pretty much um, everything that uh, makes up the universe as we know it. And um, there is the, the opposite of, pretty much it's the exact opposite of matter. And uh, scientists have found small amounts of antimatter, but it's very hard for them to store this antimatter. So that's what they're really working on doing. So through particle collisions, they're trying to store antimatter for long periods of time. And my second question was, because it, it was like a really big deal, the discovery of the Higgs boson, and it has the nickname of the God particle, or God, the God particle. Yeah. Could you tell them why it has that nickname? So when the Higgs boson was first uh, hypothesized by uh, Peter Higgs, um, which it is named after, uh, someone made a book um, after it actually called the God particle, um, and. It's pretty much called the God particle because it's so it was so hard uh, to find, and um, it, it pretty much the name came from the nickname came from this book, and it just became a popular nickname after the title of this book. Uh, yeah. Um. So, if if you have antimatter and then regular matter, do they know like what the antimatter will do if it comes in contact with? It's hard to tell because they've only been able to uh, store the antimatter for uh, milli uh, nanoseconds, uh, very small amounts of time. So it's kind of hard to tell what reactions it will cause um, if coming into uh, interaction with regular matter. So I'm super confused. Um, what is the God So, uh, it uses magnets to accelerate particles as depicted by the lights, and then once the particles reach their maximum speed, it releases them into a chamber and these particles collide, and finally these detectors detect the new particles being formed through the collision of these particles. Okay. So, um, why would they, like, make this? Like, like uh, to, as I stated before, this um, made 
the, arguably the most important discovery in the field of physics in the past century. So it's something very important in the science world to have. And also, uh, I don't think so because it's uh, kind of hard to um, actually figure out which particles to accelerate and actually start it up. So I think only an expert uh, would know how to use this as a weapon. And I, I don't think it, it can actually be used as a weapon because it's really here to help us understand more about our universe and not to be used as a weapon. Um, okay, so I kind of have two questions. Um, first of all, what does the does like the the giant magnetic field have any impact on the world or anything? Does it have like I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but does it kind of alter any kind of? No, the okay. giant okay. the giant magnetic field is contained in the LHC. I just wanted. To show, I'm, I'm not saying that every time it creates a magnetic field, a uh, hundred thousand times that of the Earth. So I just wanted to show uh, what it is capable of doing, what these superconducting magnets are capable of doing. Okay, and then my second question is, where do they get them all like, the money for? Uh, it's a European-funded project by uh, CERN, which is a European organization for physics, and um, it mainly came from European countries. Dylan, have you ever seen the movie Star Trek? Yes, I actually went and saw a new one recently. So, they were able to, um, they used antimatter as a bomb in that movie, didn't they? Like yeah, well that's like, like, that's like, that's like science that's fiction, that's like, yeah. in, yeah, they made a similar movie where they used antimatter as a weapon also, that's like in the future where they've been able to kind of store antimatter for long periods of time. Yeah, so if, the, if scientists were able to store it for a long period of time, could it be used? Um, possibly, uh, I don't. I don't necessarily know the exact reaction with regular matter. Yeah, Quincy. Uh, when was it made? Uh, it was made in. Two, it was fully completed in two thousand eight. I don't think it started uh, operations until about a year later. Alex. Uh, are there multiple Higgs bosons? Well, the Higgs boson is a. It's a class of particles, so, um, or it's not a class, it's a particle, so, yeah, I, I assume there, it's many particles, like there are multiple protons and mul multiple neutrons, so. Uh, when you said it, it like provided energy, uh, what do you mean by that, like, did it create energy or? or what, what do you mean? You said like, it, like, how like it, like you said it, like you need a lot of energy and it provided that. Yeah. So the the superconducting magnets and the electrical fields provide this energy oh, okay. of ten tera electron volts, and that's an immense amount of energy. It's actually uh, only only that energy can be created for by the LHC. I'd like to give you two more questions and we'll do feedback. Uh, Caroline. Is um liquid helium? Yeah. Is that dangerous? Um, I mean, you would obviously wouldn't want to touch it because it would automatically freeze everything, but uh, like I don't, body? what? Like your yeah, it's the coldest liquid element, so it's about um, zero degrees Kelvin, so yeah, it, it is dangerous if it comes into contact with your body. So then how do they put it on the thing? Because no one actually goes into this uh, circuit, it's, they pump it, in, they pump the, liquid helium into the magnets just to cool down the magnets and the magnets are placed inside the circuit so no one's actually going into this circuit except for the particles. Um, do you know what would happen if someone were to stand like in the chamber or in the circuit um, unprotected when the atoms collided? So they like die? Yeah, they'd probably die. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel Comics that have something new to write about. Um, all right, let's go into feedback for Bayan. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, your topic is very interesting, and like how you explained it as thoroughly is very interesting. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I just want to commend you because I had no idea what this was when you said you were doing this, and I was like, like, and like you actually explained it to me where like I felt like I was like being like talked to by like a professor, like 
simplified the topic and it was like really nice to hear you talk about this because you're kind of an expert on it and I didn't like Kelsey I didn't know what this was and then now I, now I can go home and be like well there goes something new today. Thank so. you. Yeah once again your knowledge on the topic was very impressive and you building this like a smaller model of it I mean I wouldn't even know where to start to build one of those so that's pretty impressive. Thank you. A lot. Okay, I think you did like a really good job in your presentation. You memorized all your facts, which was like extremely hard, and you took like a giant topic and basically like made it smaller, and it was very, very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You were really well rehearsed because you didn't have to like turn around and look at your like slides too many times. Thanks. That's great. I have to also compliment you as a as the teacher that you are because you did take something very complex. And I think it shows a lot about what the audience got about it by the types of questions they asked. That they were clearly intrigued and impressed and wanted to know more. And I have to compliment you guys too on the intelligent questions that you asked. And I want to compliment you again on how you handled the questions. It wasn't just that you just memorized, this is what I'm going to say for each slide. But you didn't know what questions were going to be thrown at you. And you gave really articulate, well thought out answers to all of them. Okay, let's hold everybody for just a second, except for the presenters. I'm going to let you walk your parents out because I know they want to give you a high five or a hug or both right now because you did a nice job. Everybody else. Oh. Oh.